Welcome to this lecture about transferases. My name is Per Bailon and I am a professor at KTH Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, Sweden. The transferase class of enzymes is a diverse enzyme class uh, that contains many, many very useful enzymes for bicatalysis. The common feature is that a functional group is transferred from a donor substrate to an acceptor substrate. A few examples are the amino transferases that transfer an amino group, acyl transferases uh, that transfer acyl groups, kinases that transfer phosphate groups, and glycosyl transferases that transfer glycosyl units. I only have time to briefly go through amino transferases and acyl transferases in this short lecture. First of all, we have to realize that there are different chemistry involved depending on what is being transferred. And in many cases, a transferase needs a cofactor, or more correctly, a coenzyme, to catalyze its reaction. This coenzyme is often pyridoxal phosphate, PLP. And I will start by briefly describe this important coenzyme. PLP is an important and multi-talented coenzyme that is used also by other enzymes than the transferases. This is a fascinating example of how nature is using the same coenzyme, PLP, to solve very diverse chemical problems, such as racemization, transamination, beta or alpha decarboxylation, or aldol additions. On this slide, you see these different enzymes here to the right. And the role of PLP is to act as mainly an electron sink that can fine-tune the electron density and together with the enzyme active site, orient the substrate so that the correct reaction takes place. On this slide, the case where the substrate is an alpha amino acid is shown. The PLP is sitting in these enzymes uh, bound through an imine bond formed between the aldehyde of PLP and the lysine side chain in the enzyme active site, the catalytic lysine. Next, the amino group on the substrate amino acid replaces the lysine and an external imine is formed. This complex is not covalently bound to the enzyme and it may actually cause problems if it leaves the enzyme. Next, the electron withdrawing property of the pyridinium ring is displacing the electron density and a stereoelectronic effect plays a major role in promoting a bond breaking event at either A, B or C. According to uh, the Dunatans hypothesis, which has been described in many review articles. This leads to different reaction pathways to follow and different enzyme activities. Now to the example of the PLP enzymes transaminases. These enzymes catalyze the transfer of an amino group from a donor to an acceptor. An amino group can be transferred to an alpha carbon, a beta carbon, or an omega carbon, as shown here. Therefore, we speak about alpha transaminases, catalyzing the formation of an alpha amino acid, as shown on the top example. If the amino group is transferred to carbon more distant from the carboxyl group, then it would be a beta transaminase if the amino group ends up on the carbon next to the alpha carbon. Or an omega transaminase if it is even more distant. A beta transaminase is nowadays included in the omega transaminases. There is an especially interesting and useful enzymatic activity observed among the omega transaminases. This is when the substrate does not need the carboxyl group. These omega transaminases that lack the requirement of a carboxylated substrate, they are usually called 
amine transaminases to highlight that they don't need an amino acid derivative as substrates. Amine transaminases come from many sources and the most common is bacterial cells. Here are just a few examples of organisms from where common amine transaminases have been isolated. The top example shows the enzyme that was used and engineered to produce the anti-diabetic drug cetagliptin by the companies Merck and Codexis. This work was published in Science in 2010 and describes impressive enzyme engineering work for a bicatalytic industrial process. The high stereoselectivity is an important property of transaminases, and there are two different strategies you can use to produce a chiral compound in high enantiomeric excess with a transaminase. Stereoselective synthesis or kinetic resolution. In stereoselective synthesis, a prochiral substrate is used, such as in this example, a ketone, and the enzyme produces a chiral amine in high enantiomeric excess and close to 100% yield, since all substrate can be converted to the same product. Here circled in green. Uh, on the other hand, in kinetic resolution, we start with the racemic amine, a 50-50 mixture of the two enantiomers, and the enzyme then converts one of the substrates to the non-chiral product ketone, and the other one is left behind. The maximal yield we can get of the chiral amine here is just 50% circled in red. The issue of an unfavorable equilibrium is important in the case of stereoselective synthesis, and such reactions need methods for equilibrium displacement. The major drawback of a kinetic resolution is instead that only 50% yield is possible. I will come back to methods for equilibrium displacement shortly, but first I want to give you more details about how a transaminase is working. Here is a typical transaminase catalyzed reaction where the amino group of the amine donor isopropyl amine is transferred to the amine acceptor acetophenone. The Cleland scheme for this reaction is shown below, where we see the isopropyl amine binding to the enzyme and transferring its amino group and then leaves the enzyme as acetone. Then comes the second substrate, acetophenone, binds to the enzyme, which then transfers the amino group and the chiral product phenylethylamine leaves. To the right is a more detailed reaction mechanism where we see the coenzyme PLP and how first the amino donor forms a covalent bond to PLP and then how the catalytic lysine of the enzyme abstracts a proton and then water comes in and releases the first product acetone. Next, acetophenone reacts with the coenzyme, which now has the amino group, and a similar sequence of steps results in the release of the product amine. The reaction to the right is a stereoselective synthesis, and the opposite direction, when we start with the racemic amine, is a kinetic resolution. This is a ping-pong BB reaction. In a ping-pong reaction, or double displacement reaction, the first product leaves the enzyme before the second substrate enters, and thus the two substrates never actually meet in the enzyme active site. A BB reaction means that there are two substrates and two products. Let's now discuss the equilibrium a bit more. The challenge of an unfavorable equilibrium reaction can be overcome by converting uh, the byproduct to a compound that cannot go back. On this slide are a couple of important examples of equilibrium displacement. 
The first couple uh, of examples can be grouped under the concept of smart amine donors. This means the employment of an amine donor that after the amination is spontaneously isomerizing or otherwise forming a product that is not an amine acceptor. Uh, the D-amine in the top example is cyclizing after the amination and the cyclic imine is then spontaneously forming a trimer that can be used for high throughput screening of enzyme activity due to its colorimetric properties. The second example is a similar strategy and the third smart amino donor is spontaneously forming an aromatic compound after the amination. The strategies with smart amino donors has been shown in many research reports to be very efficient. The second concept can be grouped under uh, the concept enzyme cascades. The first and most simple example is crystallization or extraction of the main reaction product. The second example shows how the product of the transamination is coupled to a consecutive reaction in a cascade manner. Here, the product amine is further modified into an amide with an acyl transferase. I will come back to this reaction shortly. The other cascade examples are focusing on the product from the amine donor isopropylamine or alanine, such as reducing the pressure to evaporate acetone or turning acetone into 2-propanol with an alcohol dehydrogenase. When alanine is used as amine donor, its product pyruvate can either be converted back to alanine using alanine dehydrogenase or pyruvate can be converted to lactate using lactate dehydrogenase, to acetaldehyde using pyruvate decarboxylase or to an addition product using acetolactate synthase. I just want to add here that it's important to design a circular process so that all material is used and nothing is wasted according to the green chemistry principles. And now to the last slide about transaminases. Both S and R selected transaminases exist and new sequences in proteins are continuously discovered. This is reviewed in this very nice review article by Brian Gilmore and Tom Moody and colleagues. This means that either stereoisomer of a chiral amine can be made. Here is an example of an S-selective amine transaminase from the microbe Chromobacterium violaceum. The S-selective ATAs belong to the fold type 1 family. To the right is an example of an R-selective ATA from the microbe Nectria hematococca. The R-selective ATAs belong to the fold type 4 fold family. It is the active site architecture that controls the stereochemistry and a very simple model can be used to explain this. If we enlarge a part of the active site, we can see the coenzyme PLP and an amine coordinated in both of the enzymes. There are binding pockets in the enzyme active site, the small and the large binding pockets. And when we compare this architecture in both enzymes, we see that the active sites are mirror images to each other. It is possible to turn an S-selective enzyme into an R-selective one and vice versa with protein engineering that reduces the large binding pocket and enlarges the small one. This has been shown by several research teams in the past. Engineering of transaminases is a popular research area and a lot of data is generated on each new variant produced. The transaminase engineering database is one important database for scientists studying transaminases. At the end, I would like to turn your attention to another transferase enzyme. Namely, an acyl transferase. The acyl transferase from Mycobacterium smegmatis has a unique and unusual enzyme activity namely to perform esterbon synthesis and amide synthesis in an aqueous environment. 
where normally hydrolysis takes place. This is a very useful property that has been explored by many scientists. This enzyme is not using any coenzyme. Here is an example where a transaminase is combined with the MS acyl transferase in a cascade reaction in one pot to displace the transaminase equilibrium and to create an amide in water. The MS ACT has a high pH optimum of 9.5, so the ATA from Silicibacter pomeroy with a similar pH optimum is perfect. The MS ACT was discovered in 2007 and has been explored a lot since then. Finally, the conclusions. I hope I have shown that two of the subclasses of transferases, namely transaminases and acyl transferase, are very useful for bicatalysis. I talked mostly about transaminases and I mentioned that transaminase is using the coenzyme PLP and that either stereoselective synthesis or the reverse reaction kinetic resolution can be employed. I showed that methods for equilibrium displacement are important and I discussed the fact that both S and R selective transaminases exist and the reason for their substrate and antioselectivity. At the end, I showed the MS acyl transferase and its unique property to make esters or amides in water. And I showed a one pot enzymatic cascade reaction involving this enzyme, which is also an equilibrium displacement method for the transaminase reaction. Thanks for your attention.